Welcome back to the MetaMinds podcast where we help you master your mindset. My name's Eamon, I'm a video marketer. And my name's Dan and I'm a fully qualified counsellor. And on today's episode, we have Madison Don't. She is a YouTuber, biologist, uh, studying to be a... What's the uh, word? Naturopath. Naturopath. She was, she's a teacher she's as well. She's a teacher. Yeah, she's got it all. And she's, uh, you know, her mission on YouTube is to help people understand the root cause mm-hmm. of kind of what's happening with their body mm-hmm. uh, and understanding stress and the effects of stress on your body as well. Uh, she's literally doing a lot of stuff in uh, in the female space, you know, hormones and that kind of thing, understanding what the pill does to your body. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of stuff that's um, empirically based as well. So a lot of research is put into her video content. Um, and it's really interesting to kind of see that side where it's a personality as well as like really trying to educate people, um, be, becoming truth seekers almost before you take some sort of medication that you were prescribed by actually recognizing why you're taking it and what it's going to do to your body. Yeah. So, you know, it went for a little bit longer this episode, 45 minutes, as you'll see, that's because there's so much value in, in it. So uh, jump in, enjoy. I'm sure you'll get a lot out of this episode. And we are also Audible affiliates. So... There will be a link in the description below to get a free book on us and all of the Audible originals as well. Thanks for watching, guys. So, Madison, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. No worries. So, I suppose if we can kick off by kind of diving into a little bit of kind of how you got to the position that you're in right now. Yeah, so um, to kind of make it all make sense at the moment, I am currently kind of teaching people how to naturally heal themselves and not, I guess, go straight to prescriptions. But it hasn't always been this way. So when I was growing up, we were very much what I would consider a conventional family. So, you know, Panadol and Nurofen kind of solved all our problems. And if you were sick, you went to the doctor and you got antibiotics. Um, And then when you had your first intimate relationship, you would go on the pill. And that's just kind of how it was. No questions asked. Um, So that's kind of what I did. And then I kind of, after a few years, started to experience the side effects of the pill Um, and mostly the main one was just that I was breaking out so I was having like little hormonal breakouts every now and again and I was always kind of that teenager with really clear skin I was always the the friend in my friend group with clear skin that annoyed a lot of people I guess so um, it didn't really make sense kind of what was going on but I just kind of put it down to crazy female hormones. Um, So I was just like, "Mm, this is what happens. Um, But I didn't actually realise that the pill actually suppresses your own natural hormones and gives you the hormones itself. Um, So my body actually wasn't doing anything wrong at all. And so I was really self-conscious about it. So I went um, on antibiotics for it. And then um, the single dose antibiotics didn't actually work for me. So I had to go on a double dose of antibiotics. And I was a biologist at that time. So I graduated my science degree um, and I was always also a teacher. So I was teaching high school biology. And um, yeah, I kind of knew, I didn't really know too much about gut health at that point. Um, that came later after everything. But at that point, I did know about antibiotic resistance. So I knew that it was very real. Um, And I knew that obviously being on a double dose of antibiotics for, I was on it for a year and a half. um, And I knew that that wasn't good. Usually when you get like tonsillitis or something, you go on it for just a single dose over a couple of weeks. Um, But it kind of was seeming like whenever I tried to go back to a single dose or try and go off it, I like all the symptoms would just come back again and my my skin would go crazy. So I just kind of, my doctor was like, yeah, well, you know, as long as you're happy being on the double dose, then let's just stick with that. But I knew that it couldn't just be that way forever. I was like, okay, well, where does this end? So um, I kind of decided upon myself that I would wean myself off it. Um, And also I, at that point, had been put on the um, high dose hormonal contraceptive pill. So usually when you start experiencing symptoms, you kind of, they just up the dose. Um, And so I also wanted to get off that because I'd heard really bad um, side effects of that as well. Um, So that's kind of what I decided to do. And then um, all of a sudden, it wasn't just that my like, you know, one or two hormonal breakouts came back, but um, my whole face was basically just like covered in severe adult acne. And that's kind of when I knew that something was seriously wrong because I was like, I don't naturally like and naturally I have pretty clear skin um so I knew that kind of playing around with like the pill and antibiotics it just kind of sent my body into haywire um so yeah that's kind of what happened and um it was 
really quite challenging because I was a biology high school teacher um, and I was like hosting parades and I was like I had skin that was like worse than the teenagers that I was talking to who were experiencing (laughs) puberty. Um, And so it was like a really tough time. But I think what kind of made what was an advantage for me is that because I was a biologist, because I was a qualified like researcher, I basically every afternoon after school, I would come home, I'd like wash all my makeup off and I'd like hop straight in bed and just be like researching until like 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, So yeah, that was like my life for a good probably three months. Um, But because I think most people who struggle with like health conditions or health issues and annoying symptoms, they kind of take to the Google. Um, But I guess that's where my advantage kind of came in where I was like reading scientific journal articles and um, being able to actually find them and then decipher the information um and then yeah kind of reading books and that's kind of when I learned to educate myself on gut health and I kind of went down that path and learning the power of nutrition and it all kind of came really authentically um so yeah I just kind of followed that kind of path and um yeah I that's kind of when I enrolled in naturopathy so I'm currently now studying um to be a naturopath Um, and it just kind of opened a whole new door for me because until then I always kind of thought that medication was like the answer, um, and antibiotics and the pill. Um, but then I opened this door to like natural medicine and I realized that like, it wasn't woohoo, like it wasn't reserved for like hippies or whatever, like it actually works and that plants kind of have an effect on the body just as like, um, synthetic drugs do like prescription drugs, um, And yeah, ever since then, I've kind of started my YouTube channel because what I realized was that I was, I obviously had the advantage of being able to find that information, but there were so many people out there struggling. Like there's a crazy number of people, like women on the pill um, who have no idea. So when they, when it comes time to kind of go off the pill and then they experience all these symptoms, so many people have no idea what to do. And usually the doctors kind of tell them, oh, just go back on the pill. Um, so yeah, I just kind of started my YouTube channel to kind of bring the science into the mainstream and kind of teach people kind of dumb, not dumb it down, but just like make it really easy to understand. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where my YouTube channel evolved from. (laughs) Good stuff. There's so much to unpack there, but I suppose like initially what's crazy and it's so good that, you know, more people are pushing out these messages into the world that it's like, it doesn't have to be the way that we're, that we're taught it is like, and, and again, the pill is just so normal. It's like, well, you're going into this phase of your life now. This is what you do. This is what we do. And uh, yeah, I suppose now we're kind of entering into this age of information where it's much, much more accessible that potentially there are other ways and hopefully you can kind of get that education before you even go down that path, you know? Mm. Um, so what was it kind of initially, like you mentioned that, you know, you figured out that it was uh, the pill that was causing all this breakout. And, you know, it's interesting that it's like you said, you're researching for three months because it's generally when something like that is, is a problem, you, you, you know, that's the number one thing to kind of focus on. Like I had acne for, for a few, few years there as well. Mm. So like what was it that actually made you figure out that the pill was the thing that was actually doing this to you? Um, so originally I kind of, I probably drew the connection to the antibiotics first. Um, so I started just, yeah, through all of the research articles, there probably wasn't like one article where I was just like, yes. Um, so I actually read a book called the plant paradox. I don't know if either of you have heard of that. Um, but yeah, so it basically talks about like the gut and also talks about nutrition. And, um, I, there's things from that, that I took, there's things from that, that I like didn't take. So like the eating at the end, they give you like how a way of eating. Um, and it, I kind of feel like it is a bit restrictive, um, which I'm guessing it would definitely kind of clear the symptoms, but you also want to be able to eat Um, so that it's maintainable. You don't want to kind of go on like this. I don't really believe in diets, but even just for healing, like you don't want to do something that's going to help you heal and then you start eating normal again and then it all goes haywire. So it's about kind of, yeah, learning those um, tips to help you in the long term. Um, And so with the pill in particular, um, it was more just about learning. Yeah, it wasn't even initially. So I kind of started... Um, researching really heavily in, say, like, January of 2019 um, and then kind of found more answers and went off the antibiotics, I think it was, like, April. Um, And because I, like, went off them and then at the end of January, doctor, like, put me back on them and I was, okay, well, I'm just going to go back on them until I find answers. 
Um, but yeah, so with like the pill, it was more just learning little bits of information here and there. It wasn't just like a big rush of information. It was kind of trickling in. Like I followed, um, two really amazing, um, women on social media who I think they're both naturopathic doctors. So in America and Canada, there's like a naturopath and then there's a naturopathic doctor, um, because it's just like different, um, recognition over there for the naturopaths, um, but yeah, so Lara Bryden, she actually has a book called like the period repair manual, which is incredible. Um, but then also there's like, um, Jolene Brighton, I think. And so I kind of followed them and through their, I think it's just like trying to pick the right health practitioners to follow, because obviously there is a lot of information on social media so and much. Instagram mm-hmm. that you, that isn't, um, I guess reliable. Mm-hmm. Um, Dan's Instagram. Yep. Yep. You gotta, really totally <laughs> you gotta be careful. Totally, you gotta be careful. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. Right. Shib TV guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. All right, I'll be yeah. careful. Um, yeah, but I guess just trying to find people who, and also kind of have a bit of common sense as well to see, mm. like, if what they're saying sounds about right. So it kind of all started trickling in, and that's when I kind of just said to to my family, and my family's super supportive, um, and I just kind of said. I don't know, I was kind of like started going on a rant of all the new things that I've learned. And I was like, and it does this to your body and this to your body and this to your body. <laughs> I can yeah. relate to that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> and I was sure. just like, what? Like, why haven't I gone off this sooner? Um, so, yeah, it was only like in May last year when I actually kind of like um, cut it. And I was like, nope, I'm done. Um, and then, you know, all these questions start flooding in of like, oh, well, you know, what are you going to do about contraception then? And yeah. everyone kind of freaks out and they go, well, if you're not on, your, on the pill, like, what are you going to do? Mm. Um, and, yeah, there's like a huge range of options that you can use so it's really not the end of the world um so I was just like it doesn't matter like what matters is that um I'm not feeding my my body synthetic with drugs every single day like uh, we don't actually know exactly like what it is yeah Yeah. because it's only I mean like you know it's been on the market for a while but you know not enough that we can see like generations of what it does to people you know yeah Mm. it's just like we just come up with something and we go like yep let's do it that's yeah. it. And, and you even mentioned like the side effect of taking the pill and a lot of people will take it without even looking into what, you know, side effects yeah. or kind of issues they could have from taking a synthetic drug or any sort of drug. Mm. And the problem with that really comes down to society and I guess us focusing in on authority figures. Yeah. And the thing that's interesting as well is when you said you did your research, it's tricky as well for people out there because every argument you find on the internet, there's always a counter argument. And it was mm. good that you said, you know, to really focus in on practitioners or people who you resonate with or who have a lot of credibility behind them. Yeah. Um, so I guess like what kind of advice do you have for people who want to start educating themselves on this process? I like think whatever it may be, the pill or, you know, healthier eating or whatever it may be. Like yeah, what kind of definitely. steps would you say? Um, well, important? other than going to my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, a link no the um, <laughs> it's just really trying to make sure that you're going to reliable sources. So um, the easiest one for people, if they don't know how to kind of decipher um, the scientific articles is, yeah, go to Google and maybe search in. So like another thing that I have actually experienced since going off the pill um, is like PCOS. Um, So you can go into Google and and search for say PCOS or search for acne, but you want to try and find the websites that are reputable. So the easiest way to kind of find a reputable website is to find one that ends in, and it's not always this case, but this is kind of like the general rule, is to find one that ends in .org. Um, that means they're an organisation, but again, some people can just become an organisation. Yeah. Um, but also .edu, so that's an education one, um, and .gov, so .gov is a government website. And is that um, like global or is that just for Australia? Um, so Australia will be like .gov.au oh, right. um, yeah, and right. I think like UK will be like .gov.uk or something like yeah, that. Okay. Um, so yeah, they're kind of like the general things to look out for. Um, Google Scholar is amazing. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't even know Google Love Scholar Google exists. Scholar. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so you just kind of Google search like normal, but you do it in Google Scholar. And if you can't find Google Scholar, Google Google Scholar. Yeah. Get <laughs> um, so yeah, you just kind of search for what you're looking for. The only And then that all the results are mostly scientific journal articles or literature reviews or that kind of thing. Um, And, yeah, so it's kind of – it should be relatively straightforward, the first part of it. So usually what will pop up if you click onto a scientific journal article and most people won't have access to the full journal article because you have to kind of be a part of a university or pay for a subscription or access or something like that. Um, I'm very fortunate in that. I have been at university for way too long, so I just use my university login to access them. But um, 
yeah, there, there's actually like the abstract is the first part of a scientific journal article and um, it's kind of like the blurb of a book that ruins the ending. Mm. So if you go... But you want the ending to be ruined. In yeah, yeah, you, yeah. because you, yeah, you just want to like just tell me if it's going to work or not yeah, and then like yeah. move on. Um, so yeah, you go and you read the abstract, but you can even just kind of jump down to the last sentence or two in the abstract and it'll tell you what the study found mm. um, and if there's any like significant correlation. Um, so for example, things like... Um, I've been looking into stevia and whether stevia affects insulin because insulin resistance is something to do with like PCOS and it kind of links to the diabetes as well. So like your metabolic syndrome. Um, so yeah, if you, I'm just trying to look at whether stevia kind of spikes your blood sugar levels like normal sugars do. Um, Cause I you haven't come to a conclusion on that yet or. Well, there's a lot more studies that need to be done. Right. Um, but all the ones that I've found so far, they um, actually show promising results that it doesn't spike the blood sugar. like Because it comes from plants, sugar. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. yeah, exactly. So Stevie is kind of, if I see, I think a lot of people as well, and this is like society, it's kind of, they scared us into, oh no, not the artificial sugars, like yeah. they cause mm -hmm. cancer. And I, um, I'd like to do a bit more research on that, but I did try and have a look at whether they cause cancer. And um, at the moment, from what I've found, like there's actually no proof that they cause cancer. Right. Um, but there is proof that they are a great alternative to not spike your blood sugar um, if you have like, say, PCOS or mm. diabetes or something like that. So, um, yeah, don't quote me on that. Don't everyone like go out and just like, consume <laughs> a whole heap of stevia. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously everything in moderation. Um, but, yeah, because it's, it's really interesting, all these things that I'm still kind of learning. I mean, the important thing yeah. is to always keep learning Oh, so long sure. as you live. So yeah. I just, um, yeah, I always, I just wanted to kind of have something where I was always learning, always um, trying to improve myself in my health and, and everything. So. And I guess that your YouTube channel allows you to document a lot of these journeys as well. Yeah. 100%. So like, what is your intention moving forward with the channel? Like, what, what do you want to teach people about? What's your main focus? Yeah. So um, I just really kind of want to have people listen to their bodies. So I guess so often people we've learned to kind of rely on doctors for our health and as you should, like, you know, they're trained professionals, they know what they're doing. Um, but kind of the modern medicine, um, modern medical model is more for like emergencies. So, you know, if you're in the emergency room and you're like just bleeding nonstop, then all of those kind of drugs and prescriptions, they can save your life. Um, so modern medicine is is super important, but we're seeing a lot of diseases these days like cardiovascular disease and like diabetes where they are hugely preventable from lifestyle changes and diet. So I'm just trying to get people to stop and listen to your body and really try and find the root cause of why you're experiencing those symptoms. So um, yeah, just, just to ask like, why is this the case rather than just kind of taking prescription drugs and shutting up the symptoms because mm. they're annoying you like actually ask why and i suppose that, that that kind of points to a really good why for yourself to do that youtube channel because what you're talking about before with the google scholar thing like i can imagine a lot of people out there and for myself like if i heard that i'd be like nope like that's just too scary for me yeah. to go to you know like it just sounds like too many steps in the reading part of it so it's great that you can make digestible content for people that you know want to hear this content and understand these things without actually doing the full on research themselves. You're saving mm. a lot of people a lot of time, I suppose. But to kind of dive into that, obviously the why came from you know you having these problems in the past. But you know, is there any other particular like reasons for you know you creating this content? Like you know, obviously it takes a lot of a lot of time. Like like what's your why for your YouTube channel? Yeah, the why is just I guess because there are so many people who can't find answers. Like. Yeah, if you go and Google acne, you're going to find so many conflicting opinions. You're going to find, like, so many, even products on the market as well. Like, there's a lot of cleansers and topicals that are designed to dry out the skin, you know? If you're breaking out... they have alcohol out, in them and stuff, which is mm, not yeah, good. Yeah, it's an irritant. It, it completely dries out your natural oils. And um, I guess what people um, don't really realise is, like, if you have oily skin, don't you know, just completely strip it with drying products because your body's going to freak out and go, oh, no, we're really dry. I need to make more oil. So it's like by using those products, you're not actually, you know, reducing your oil. You're telling your body to make more. Mm. Um, so it's more about like trying to nourish your body. Um, but, yeah, I guess my why behind my YouTube channel is that at the end of the day, I was really fortunate to be 
like a qualified researcher and actually be in the position to find answers for myself. Um, and a huge thing that also had me like start my YouTube channel is that um, my family last year, a few of like my family members and stuff have been getting really sick and we were finding that like natural medicine was having an amazing effect on you know addressing those health concerns um and obviously like the specialists that they would go see pretty much the first thing that they would see would say is like steroids you know like mm -hmm. and i think it's hard to say because for a lot of those things once you go on steroids eventually they stop working so you go on stronger steroids and it just kind of goes on from there you just yep. kind of take the stronger one and then the stronger one and the stronger one it very rarely kind of goes backwards like it does but it's just a bit scary. So, yeah, to kind of um, wrap it up of, like, my why on the YouTube channel was just kind of really to take the information that I was fortunate enough to be able to decipher in the science world and bring it to the mainstream and show people that, like, you know, look, like, green tea actually does chemically produce changes in your body. Like, yeah, <laughs> drink a lot of green tea. Oh, it's, it's so good. Um, but yeah, so they actually, like, it can reduce, it's antibacterial, like it's anti-inflammatory. Um, it's just amazing. I love it. But um, it's just learning those different things about the herbs. And a lot of people, one of the like common questions that I get about the fact that I'm now learning naturopathy, because obviously I've graduated with a science degree, is that um, it's like, well, how do you go learning naturopathy and learning like all this natural stuff when you've got a science degree? Like, how do you find that? And I'm like, are you kidding? Like this degree is so scientific. We mm. learn like the plants down to like their chemical structure and it all acts on the body just like synthetics do. Mm. It's funny yeah. that people have that perception about naturopathy. And, you know, I like previously did as well. Yeah, me too. But it's like, you know, you talk about going to a family gather gathering, you just have like paint on your face and you're waving mm. like, you know, plants yeah. around and that kind of thing. Like that's what people would <laughs> think. But it's like a respectable profession and you probably should go and see one of those before you even go to a doctor or at least get a double opinion on something. Yeah. Like that. And so, that all comes down to perception, doesn't it, really? Yeah, exactly. Because like, if you're trusting a doctor with a degree, but then you won't trust someone else with a degree, it's like, where are you drawing the line there? You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. But that's ingrained into society that you trust the authority figure. 100%. And anyone wanting to study, like, naturopathy, I'll tell you right now, like, the first year is going to be very heavily science. Mm. Like, don't just think that you're going to go in there and you'll sit around in a circle Try and meditate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it's you learn it's a lot of science. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 100%. So at the moment, like, um, I'm learning about, like, pathology and yeah. how things can go wrong because I guess, like, in my science degree, I learned how things work on like a cellular level and all the all the intrinsical details and chemicals and everything like that. But I didn't really learn it in a health context. So that's mm. what I'm learning now and learning about what happens when things go wrong and then how to kind of address them. But yeah, yeah people just really don't realize that plants are like they have a chemical structure. <laughs> they really do kind of act on the body just as synthetics do. So yeah, yeah, and magic. That's so it. to switch gears a little bit, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people can have these potential, you know, health, like negative consequences or problems and that kind of thing. And one of the main problems or things that actually causes these things is stress. I know you kind of want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah. And so for those out there, like, you know, potentially very in a very stressed situation and perhaps don't like recognize it, like, and it's causing all these particular problems, like, could you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, of course. So, yeah, there's a couple of root causes that I kind of, because I focus obviously on like acne and hormones and everything like that. So there's main root causes there, but with anything in life, root causes can be like diet, can be stress, um, can be um, type of exercise you do, your hygiene, your environmental to like toxins that you're exposed to. Um, this guy, he's an environmental toxin. Basically, <laughs> disinfect everything I'm around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm experiencing that right now. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty close. <laughs> um, yeah, so stress is a huge one. I think people really underestimate it because mm. a lot of people, and this kind of goes with natural medicine, a lot of people think, oh, it's all in their head. But stress, there's actually a stress hormone, which is cortisol. Mm -hmm. And it acts on your body like all the other hormones do. Like there's hormones to help you make a baby. Not you two, but, you know, there's... <laughs> well, that's not, that's <laughs> well, not actually, <laughs> <laughs> well, in a way, you know, you prepare for it. But, um, yeah, and there's hormones that tell you when you're hungry. There's hormones that kind of help you digest. It's So cortisol is a hormone like any others, and cortisol spikes when you're stressed, and obviously you have the others like that come with it, like adrenaline and everything like that. So when you are stressed... Your, your cortisol will peak. And basically, um, have you guys heard of the fight or flight mm -hmm. response? Absolutely, yeah. 
Yeah, so um, you actually have two modes in your nervous system. So you have fight and flight, which is your sympathetic nervous system, and then you have rest and digest, which is your parasympathetic nervous system. Um, and so your fight or flight traditionally comes from when we were back in like caveman days. Oh, we love talking about caveman days on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm a biologist, so, you know, we're going to take it right back. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of when we had to avoid predators. And if you were faced with a, like a lion, you can either fight or flight. Mm. So Probably flight, away. right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think so. I don't know how much <laughs> testosterone do you have. But, um, yeah, so obviously there's like another one that you can like freeze. That's not going to get you anywhere. Maybe. You can play dead, I guess. Yeah, There's those goats that, that have that. Yeah, they, they do that. And they have goats and they just fall over and roll down the hill. Yeah. Do people leave them alone then? I don't know. Well, <laughs> maybe yeah. Do they survive? They're rolling YouTube down the hill videos. as well. Let's like, look into that after this podcast. Yeah, we will look into that. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. To put on the to-do list. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what happens is we, uh, when we have a stressor in today's modern world, we don't know the difference. Basically, a stress is when you feel threatened and there's a consequence. Um, so the consequence is something that will threaten you. So, for example, if you receive a bill in the mail, then you can feel threatened because obviously you're not going to like the consequence if you can't pay that is your survival. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you like even it's not even just like survival. It's even just um, like mentally, if you get a, a thing from the landlord, that can really ruin your self-esteem. Um, and also if you have to ration your favorite foods or whatever, um, and even just like preparing for an exam as well. So yes, even if you've studied, you can be stressed about an exam. And if you fail the subject, the consequence is threatening because then you have to repeat it and it's, mm. you know, pushes back your timeline, but also it can wreck your, your self-esteem because even if you pass, you might not get the grade that you wanted. Um, so like, I don't know, I'm kind of a bit of a goody two shoes nerd when it comes to uni and everything. And I was always aiming for like those HDs and, you know, if you got a D, it was like, <gasps> so it can actually kind of, and I'm different. I've worked on that out of my like six years of uni or whatever. Um, but it can really kind of tap into the, am I good enough if I mm. can't get my best, like what I'm capable of. If but I'm like to best. zoom out a little bit, like, you know, in talking about caveman days, like they didn't have those kinds of stresses. That's only like a modern kind of thing, which yeah, I think exactly. is part of the huge problem because we have a lot of these social problems, which can make us feel like we're threatened. Yeah. And really that's the biggest threat we have nowadays is social threats. Mm -hmm. We want to feel accepted and fit in and have friends and stuff. We don't really have that many physical threats unless you hang around Dan and he just like beats <laughs> people, you know? Um, so like, yeah, that's, it's just interesting because like it's hard to recognize that you're stressed because a lot of these things are only very new to us, you yeah. know, to actually have these kind mm -hmm. of social threats and well, such. Even the show, social threats is that basically the whole point of our existence is to survive so that we can reproduce and then mm -hmm. die and then they reproduce and then they reproduce and that's Way just biology vibe. like yeah. that doesn't make it sound so exciting if at you all. don't if you don't have friends how are you going to reproduce yeah, like, exactly. come on it like threatens your your ability to um pass on your genetic makeup exactly. like that is and biology like you belong yeah. in tribe as well yeah exactly because after so. survive it's thrive right and that's obviously like a part of all this as well yeah yeah, yeah so it all kind of stems back to that, but um, our body doesn't know the difference because we are still, you know, biochemically the same. If we experience a, th a threat, like if we feel threatened, then we our cortisol goes up and we're in that mm. fight or flight. Um, so we can kind of have a think about chemically what happens internally when we are stressed by thinking about what would happen when we were to run away from a lion. So like what's one of the things that you would experience if you were like trying to run away from a lion? Mad anxiety. Adrenaline. Right? Yeah, mad anxiety, adrenaline. Um, your so like with the anxiety, obviously that's helpful in that situation because you need to think of all possible outs. So you're thinking about, you know, if I run down here, is there going to be an escape or yeah. where's like the Where closest weapon? Or, yeah. yeah, definitely. If you're yeah. <laughs> running away from a lion, <laughs> <laughs> this has happened too soon. Yeah. Or too recently <laughs> with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also like your breathing increases. Do you mm -hmm. know why your breathing increases? Allow more oxygen to your external extremities so you yeah. can run faster yeah 100 percent, because the oxygen is how we make like the atp the energy mm -hmm. um and then why does our heart rate increase pump more blood what is oxygen. this a test or something it yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my heart rate's increased now like. clearly dan's done a bit of <laughs> biology <laughs> yeah. 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 um so that's like that's the core of science is asking like why mm. um rather than like if you ask people kind of 
you know, why do we breathe oxygen? Everyone's like, well, I don't know, to live. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, you kind of, all these things make sense. And obviously, yeah, you do need the, the increased heart rate to pump, pump that blood with that oxygen to take it from your lungs to the cells, particularly the muscle cells, because obviously if you're going to run, your muscle cells need to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all those things where you can be, and also like your muscles tense up because they're getting ready to be used to run away or to fight. Um, and like your, your nervous system gets on high alert and you can get kind of a bit jittery. So these like people can be sitting there at their desks working and get really tense and sore all because of this natural body's reaction to stress. Mm. Um, and it can have, obviously if you have chronic stress, so if you have a lot of stress over time, it just builds up. Like you're not supposed to be in that fight or flight state for mm. a very long time. It's supposed to, like, obviously enhance your survival. It can be productive as well um, by increasing, like, motivation and productivity and it can boost your mood. Um, but at the end of the day, you really need to come back into that right rest and digest because another thing that you don't need to be able to do when you're running away from a lion is eat lunch. Yeah. Like, you don't <laughs> just like, say... You don't have to do that right now. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's pause this game of, like, tag and, like, yeah. I just need to eat some food because I'm, like, not really running as fast as possible. So, yeah, they just... Don't really, they don't listen to you when you ask a lion to stop. Yeah. So I'm curious about obviously stress releases cortisol, which in turn I know that it can also store fat as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so are there are there good stresses out there? Are there are there positive stresses in the modern world? Would you say? Well, yeah, you do need it to kind of boost your motivation and productivity. So I think a lot of people. If you have coffee, some it depends how coffee affects you, but, you know, if you have a lot of coffee, then you kind of feel like you can take on the world and you're like, yeah, let's smash out all of these tasks. And, um, yeah, but I guess the, the counter to that is that then it throws out the rest of your, because your cortisol fluctuates up and down throughout the day. It's just kind of your body's natural rhythm. And so if you throw in, like, caffeine into the mix, then it can kind of um, throw it out. But, yeah, obviously stress can enhance your survival it can um i'd be really good i guess when you're trying to like exercise but um yeah i guess for the majority like it's just like nerves i guess like nerves mm. can mean that something really means a lot to you it can mean that you're excited nerves aren't always a bad thing um but it's just kind of how you manage that that kind of counts there's a signal basically that your body's putting out and then you decipher what it's trying to say yeah it's how you perceive the why. it yeah 100%. So yeah. for those out there that potentially are stressed and don't recognize it and it's maybe, you know, trickling on to cause a, a bunch of other different problems, like what are some ways that they can potentially recognize that they're experiencing stress? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the first thing is perception. So again, you may not actually realize you're stressed, but if you feel like you're kind of worried about something or if you're on high alert, then you need to kind of, I guess it's that self-awareness. You need to like come back into yourself and go, okay, well, what am I worried about? Like what... What am I kind of struggling with at the moment? And I think most people probably have something that they're struggling with at some point, um, even if it's just kind of like you have, you're really excited about this dream or this work goal that you're trying to achieve and um, your business might be flourishing and then, but you're actually thinking about, okay, well, what's next? What's the next step? And I guess... <laughs> Dan, <laughs> we do that a lot. <laughs> well, we both do that a lot. And I suppose this is partly the whole podcast thing is that yeah. we're always like thinking about the next thing. And this mm -hmm. is also another form of stress is that we're like trying to achieve so much and then we put this pressure on ourselves and we, we become stressed because of that kind of thing, which is yeah. kind of what you pointed to there. Mm, which I think is a lot of us, like being sure. creatives and also like owning your own business and everything everything you kind of always think to the next thing for sure and you don't really want to become complacent if you do have that kind of creative mindset yeah because then you'll just get stuck in yeah position exactly mm. lose all your inspiration and motivation and i don't know i'm very inspiration like an aspirational person in that mm. i always need to be getting to the next thing but i guess it's probably common these days to hear like you need to just stop and be proud of where you're at and mm. kind of live in the moment. Um, <laughs> That's my next YouTube video actually is all about oh, really? slowing down and stuff. Mm. I've li literally tied it like a message to my future self because it's <laughs> like, it's literally a, me a message for me because whenever I'm get into that zone, because it comes in waves, right? Sometimes you're like, you know what? I'm vibing right now. I'm in a pretty good like present space but then for a few weeks they're like manic and you just try to do too many things yeah mm. so that's kind of like now i can go back and watch that video about me telling me to like hey yeah. slow down <laughs> <laughs> you actually enjoy life more when you're doing that yeah, yeah. but you got to kind of find that balance
balance and recognize it. And that's the hardest part, I suppose. Mm, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. there's purpose to everything. Like, I guess with my YouTube channel, the more people I can reach, the more people I can help with their health and kind of inspire them to think about why their body's doing what they're doing. And mm. so um, sometimes you can also, when you're like doing things on social media, get caught up in the numbers and go like, why aren't I growing faster or that kind of thing. But you just kind of have to stop and think and go, okay, well, you know, if I all of a sudden jumped up to 100K or a million followers tomorrow, I feel like I'd be getting thrown opportunities left, right and centre that I wouldn't have the time to really invest mm -hmm. in what is meaningful for me and, like, what I'm trying to achieve at the moment. Um, so, like, at the moment I'm trying to write, like, an ebook all about teaching women on their hormones and, I mean, you have sex ed at school but... How much do you it's remember? It's pretty horrible. Yeah. How much do you remember? We, we had a um, you know, sex therapist, sex therapist um, right. on the podcast as well. And yeah. Yeah, she agreed. She's from America and she agreed like uh, in America She's and also enough. in Australia. It's just pathetic. Yeah. Really, the sex ed we get here. So. Yeah. 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 And even just like. Not prepared. Yeah. Not even in just like the interaction, but also like how our bodies work individually. Like a mm. lot of women, they just kind of experience their period every month and they go, I don't know what's happening, but it's kind of annoying. Move on. Like, mm -hmm. and they don't actually understand that, um, I mean, it's the menstrual cycle in particular is a huge indicator on, of how healthy a woman is because going back to those caveman days is that a, it takes a lot of energy to make a baby, right? So, like, if your body doesn't perceive you risk-free and to be able to support a successful pregnancy, it's not even going to let you ovulate in the first place. Like, it's just a waste of energy. Mm. So, like, if... Um, you know, if a woman has kind of like lost her period or lost her menstrual cycle, like that is straight away a huge sign to be like, there's something wrong. Mm. Like, and it, it often leads, like can indicate something to do with health. Like maybe you're not eating right. And, um, you know, maybe there is that stress, like stress can, can do that because it is that chemical. It is that cortisol. So mm -hmm. it's just crazy that it, like something that you think is perceived can actually have a lot of biochemical reactions in the body. Yeah. Wow. I guess it just goes to show that like, you know, even though we're modern humans, we really don't understand so much of still what's happening with our bodies. You mm. know, we've been doing this for what, like millions of years or something, but really we've only gotten the internet in the past 30 or 40 years. Like it's still in its infancy stages. We just don't, you know, the, the correct knowledge, as you said, like isn't really surfacing and, and being put out there. And that's partly because I suppose people can profit from that, but that's a mm. whole conversation <laughs> whole for thing, another yeah. time. So yeah. you mentioned you're working on an, an ebook. like what other things are you working on and what other goals are you moving towards right now? Yeah, so I think um, at the moment, like with my YouTube channel, I really put a lot of effort into the research behind it because I don't just kind of want to tell people, you know, just start meditating and try a bit of yoga and the end. Like I want my tips to kind of really resonate with them. And I guess the way that it's been working so far and what works for me is actually seeing the evidence. So obviously that's kind of how I found um like the natural health realm as I went through those scientific journal articles and found the evidence on the herbs and on the plants and go, oh, like this stuff actually works. Um, so in my YouTube channel, like in my YouTube videos, I actually screenshot those studies and like highlight where I'm referring to and mm. highlight the findings so that people can actually, um, you know, really understand that that is evidence. It's not just something that someone's made up. Like that is what the scientific evidence shows. Um, so there is a lot of time and effort that kind of goes into those videos. Um, but I am trying to, at the moment, reach more people by obviously writing the book because um, then I can kind of explain what's going on to more people. Um, at the moment, I just, my DMs just get absolutely flooded and um, with like full three messages long of like their, their health story. Um, mm. And it's like restrictive because obviously you can't give health advice to people that you haven't met, that mm -hmm. you don't know their health history yeah, other yeah. than like a three page. It doesn't matter thing. how much context they yeah, give you, exactly it's probably right. not all the context. Exactly yeah. right. And it, it's just not right to do so. So it's really restrictive mm. kind of what I can offer them. Um, and it all stems as well just from them having an own, their own understanding of their bodies. So by able, being able to get that book out, um, it will mean that women can actually be more in touch with their bodies um, and actually understand like, what what is going on here mm. um and so yeah that's kind of I also want to write a a program as well I have started it but again like there's just I feel like there's so much research to be done and so much um 
information to go into all of these projects that I um I guess I probably have a bit of shiny object syndrome is that I, I'm all. like this can help people and this can help people yeah, and this can help sure. people and I just kind of like want to do it all and get it done tomorrow but as long as you have any yeah. good intentions yeah, yeah it sounds like you want it to be you know a good product as such you yeah just want to chuck it out for the m- monetary game like a lot of people yeah too. like you actually want to take some pride in it oh 100 and like i'm a perfectionist as well so i and like also being a teacher i want everything to be explained as clearly as possible yeah. like i want people to to and i guess i have received some really good feedback with the youtube videos like i want people to watch it or read it and go huh I understand it. Mm. Like that's the best feeling as a teacher when you explain something to someone and they go, huh. Yeah, that aha moment. Yeah, and you're like. That's what I was actually going to ask. Like what kind of wow moments have you had so far since starting a YouTube channel? Have you had some amazing connections so far? Yeah, um, a lot of people have kind of DM'd me. I think it's all as well with like the gut health because not a lot of people know about gut health. I didn't really know anything about gut health until last year and um, started educating myself and then obviously started studying. But um I really educated myself on the antibiotics and they weren't just, you know, affecting the antibiotic resistant bacteria, um, which were obviously the bacteria that you're trying to get rid of, but they actually affect your bacteria in your gut. Um, And so just by learning about probiotics and prebiotics, because like I said, when we were a conventional family and we just, we got sick and we went to the doctor and got antibiotics for like tonsillitis, the doctor um, would say like, oh, you should go take some an- um, some probiotics while you take these antibiotics. And I go, yeah, yeah. Like they're probably plus- placebo. I'm already paying for these antibiotics. Like I don't now want to pay like $30 for mm. probiotics. Which like, is probably how most people feel, right? Would feel, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you're just like, mm, I don't think that's necessary. I'm just going to go with what's going to cure me. Thanks, mate. It's good your mm. doctor actually told you about that. Though. Yeah, that I is re- really I recall good. one time when a doctor said you should take prebiotics. Yeah, yeah. well, maybe <laughs> it's just, I don't know which doctor it was. Yeah, I don't know which doctor it was. Maybe it just really stuck with me and I because it probably stuck with me for the wrong reasons and I was like, what? No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm not spending 30 bucks on yeah, that. Yeah, and then um, I educated myself on like probiotics and everything <laughs> like that. She called her straight away, thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That was one of the biggest differences I noticed when I started my healing journey is I started taking probiotics and within like three weeks I started noticing a huge difference and I was just like, you're kidding. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice. So to kind of wrap this up a little bit, um, you know, what are some potentially quick tips? Um, maybe this is something you want to avoid because there's a lot more context to dive into, but some potential kind of quick tips for people out there that are either experiencing stress or experiencing symptoms that they don't really know what the solutions are to them to kind of overcome those or recognize those for what they are. Yeah, I think it just really comes from listening to your body and being really self-aware. So like at the end of the day, we... Most of the things that we do in our life are choices that we've made. So if you are working like 15 hour days and only getting five hours sleep, yes, you might feel like you need to work those 15 hour days to you know, support your family and maybe you do, but there's always choices you can make, um, whether consciously or subconsciously to, it, it all depends on what you're prioritizing. Like if you really want to prioritize your health, then you know, trying to look at how you can change or, you know, make improvements in your work life so that you can both support your family and improve your health. Um, And things even like, um, I know you guys talk to a lot of like entrepreneurs and um, people in business and anyone would kind of um, relate that if you are, you know, smashing out huge days trying to get to your goal and or trying to build a product or build a service and that's, amazing if you can sustain that but if that is at the expense of your health then people can try and put in those huge days but if you experience burnout before you reach your goal it's going to take you a hell of a lot longer to get over burnout first and then keep going and get Mm -hmm. back on track so sometimes um like I, I like to say that success is a marathon it's not a sprint and you need to actually put in and this just goes with health as well even for people who aren't like entrepreneurs is that you need to put in sustainable practices like it, killing yourself in the gym doing like absurd things and like you know putting in stupid hours that aren't maintainable or that are making you absolutely miserable or going on a diet that's so restrictive that you can't maintain it for more than a month it's not going to benefit you in the long run, long run. So you have to actually think long term, think why am I experiencing what I'm experiencing? What like, you know, change what you can control and let go of what you can't. And at the end of the day, stress is very much a perception thing. Like two people can get a bill in the mail. If it threatens one person and it doesn't threaten the other person, then the person that it threatens will experience, you know, the increased heart rate will experience the muscle tension, will experience all those fight or flight symptoms 
and the other person won't. Probably because so. their bill's higher, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> it could be lower. That's and then true. You yeah, that's right. true. Then they got a real problem. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that's kind of something that we can do is try and, you know, I mean, meditation is a great tool. Everyone says it, but it really is, and it can really help you kind of put things into perspective for yourself and also get really clear and honest with yourself about, you know, am I bringing this on myself? Can I change any of these things? What can I do? And just take responsibility for your health. Like, don't put the responsibility on your doctor who has 15 minutes with you. Like, mm. p- take the responsibility. It's your life. Yeah, take the responsibility to be self-aware, to always be improving, to focus on your health and just, um, yeah, just it is your life. Yeah, good stuff. Well, I'm sure we've got uh, so much actionable content in there, so that's really awesome. Hopefully. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Um, we'll be sure to link all of your stuff in the description, so if you Definitely. guys want to check her out, be sure to do so. Um, thanks again. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you.